Two weeks ago, a brand new power meter from FSA landed here in the Llama lab. And today I take you through all the details of this new unit after putting it through its paces, both indoors and out. FSA have been selling power meter crank sets for a few years now. And if you look closely, you'll note the Powerbox Spider power meter is a rebranded Powermax out of Germany. This new Powerbox SC offering is of their own making. It's a single sided power meter using a pod fixed to the inside of the left crank. Technology wise, there's really nothing notable or exciting about this power meter. Power meters like this have been on the market now for near on 10 years, and that does include meters that are both dual, amp plus and Bluetooth. The Powerbox SC though does have one interesting feature that I haven't seen on another power meter. I'll get to that in a few moments. But first up, the technical specifications of the crank set or the chain set as sent over from FSA. It's an aluminium crank coming in either a 30 mil or a 24 mil spindle version with either the BB386 Evo option or the Mega XO, which is compatible with the Shimano 24 mil bottom bracket. It comes with their own alloy chain rings with an option of either 5339 all the way down to a very small 4630. The BCD is 120 and 90 mil on the two different chain rings. Chain line, 45 millimeters. Q factor is 149 millimeters, which is just a little bit wider than the standard Shimano chain set. This fits both Shimano and SRAM 11 speed systems. The available crank lengths for this is 145 mil all the way up to 175 mil. They list the pod weight as 20 grams, but that's kind of irrelevant as you need to use the entire crank arm, not just the pod. Uh, 793 grams system weight for the 170 mil 4630 combination, which is the smallest chain ring set. The chain set that I had in the Llama Lab weighed in at 891 grams. That's the 172.5 with the 5236 chain rings. Now onto the technology of this crank, the power meter. Battery is a CR2450, claimed battery life between 400 and 450 hours. I've seen both listed, but let's go with 400. That's quite a lot. Ant Plus and Bluetooth Smart Broadcast. It has power, cadence, and will give you virtual left-right balance, which I'll talk about more in detail shortly. Claimed accuracy, plus or minus 1%, waterproofing IPX7, active temperature compensation built in, and price-wise, as listed on their website today, $446 US, 385 euros, 615 Aussie dollars, or 330 pounds. Now, this is available as a single crank arm, not just the whole chain set, as I've listed just there. FSA state that any FSA crank set with a 30 mil spindle or a 24 mil spindle can accommodate this left crank and be converted to a power meter crank set. However, there's no listing on their website of this, so I'm not sure about pricing and availability of that. A closer look at the crank set here, we have the 5236 with the 24 mil mega XO spindle. That's the right side and the chain rings. Left hand side is the crank arm with the power pod attached to the inner side. Documentation supplied is pretty thorough about how the power meter works and everything you need to know about the installation of the crank, including the installation of the 2450 coin cell battery, which requires the removal of four very small screws, which is okay here on the bench. It's going to be a little bit more difficult with this crank on the bike to replace the battery. Now onto the scales, left crank and pod with battery, weighing in at 245 grams. The right side and chain rings coming in at 645. And together, tipping the scales at 890, but there's also a wave washer, making it 891 on the scales. Now onto the management app. This was quite the task. Um, I had to search for FSA in the app store. I uh, clicked on the FSA shopping app. I clicked on more from this developer and surprise, surprise, here is the management app, which is not listed in any other documentation of this. So I kind of stumbled across the management app here. Once installed, you can scan for Bluetooth devices, which will scan for every single Bluetooth device in the near vicinity. Connecting to the power meter, there is a firmware update to install. So we'll click on check for updates and here it is. So fix an issue where left right power ratio may be incorrect or fixed on first use improved battery percentage readings and zero calibration is now available in the PBOX app. Good stuff. We'll get this installed. Only takes a few minutes and job done. From here, we'll go check out the other features. We have the virtual left right scaling, which I'll dive into in a moment. We have some records recorded if we were to use this app to record any data. 
And here's the zero functionality within the app, which is not going to work here on the bench. I've always said that if a power meter is going to be replacing a component on your bike, it needs to perform just as well, if not better than the component it's replacing. Now I'm talking about the full chain set, chain rings, spider, or pedals. This chain set installed fine, it rode fine, but nothing really beats that front crisp changing using Shimano rings. This was just a little bit off. Might have been due to that chain line change. Maybe a bit of tweaking with the front derailleur could have helped that. Um, one thing of note though, this unit is quite heavy. It is a budget entry level power meter and cranks it. So it's not one for the weight winnings. As you saw before, 891 grams. As comparison, uh, other dual or total measuring power meters come in a lot lighter than this one. FSA's very own SLK crank set with the 4i dual pods installed weighs in at 656 grams, which is 235 grams lighter than this. The Powermax Ngco combined with the Rotor Aldo cranks, which I'm quite fond of, 807 grams, so 84 grams lighter. And the Stages Durace 9100 dual sided comes in at 669 grams, which is 220 grams lighter than this chain set. I do acknowledge those comparisons are probably a little unfair. The Powerbox SC is in a different league altogether to those performance-based power meters. The Powerbox SC, I wouldn't call a performance-based power meter. It's an entry-level budget meter option. Finally, before going deep down the rabbit hole in the data analysis, I'll cover what the virtual left-right balance is with this power meter. It's a feature I have not seen on any other single-sided meter. And I do admit it's lacking documentation. I couldn't find anything on it. So after a number of hours doing a number of tests, I'm still no closer into knowing exactly what they're doing with this, but I've got a small grasp on what they're trying to achieve. So if you know your left right balance or bias for your pedaling, you can set that within the power meter and it will adjust the total power accordingly. So let's just say you're 52 on the left and 48 on the right. You set that within the power meter, it will then scale things accordingly and give you a more accurate total power number. The Powerbox SC will also broadcast that left-right balance bias that you've set and also it will be recorded within the fit file. However, this setting is static, it doesn't change. The logic being that if you need to scale up the power meter, you'll need to put the bias on the right side. If you want to scale the unit down to read lower, you'll need to increase the bias on the left side. Now here's the issue with this. No rider is ever consistent with their left-right balance. It changes based on terrain, fatigue, gear you're in, um, what you're doing on the handlebars, having a coffee. You, it just, it's just so variable. And this is one of the downsides of using a single-sided meter. And to really know your true left-right balance, you need to be using a power meter that truly measures your left-right balance at all times. So this is an interesting idea, but technically it's going to confuse people. And here's why. With the virtual left-right balance set to 50-50, the power meter is broadcasting 50-50. So everything looks happy and normal here until I change it. And this is where the plot thickens. If I scale the virtual left-right balance to 52-48 within the app, then the power meter broadcasts the inverse 48-52. If I then scale up my virtual balance within the app to 60-40, what the power meter reports is 40-60 to the head unit. Now, technically correct, and it's doing a lot more under the hood than this, trying to understand exactly what was taking place here, the separation between the setting of the virtual balance and what the power meter was reporting was quite the task. So after many hours of left, right, and changing my balance and changing the scaling and everything and putting that all in a spreadsheet and doing the numbers, what they're trying to do is really interesting, but it is a waste of time to be totally honest. They should scrap that entirely and just simply allow users to scale the power meter up or down by 0.5% increments and call it a day. Much easier, job done. On to the data analysis side of things and before jumping over to my favorite website on the internet where we can, well, you know what it does. I'm gonna pull up some summary screens that I've sent over to FSA for analysis. So first of all, what we've got here is an Asioma Uno up against the Powerbox SC, so a single left pedal up against the single left crank in an outdoor ride. The conclusion here is that it has a sweet spot of around 200 watts. Going over 200 watts, the Powerbox SC is under-reporting. It also clips off the top there, anything over 450, you can see here, and just a slow little ramp test there at the end. As soon as we pass that 200 watt zone up into the 300s, uh, it's not really happy. So a little bit of inconsistency there reading against the Asioma Uno. Jumping over to the indoor side of things, and it's a similar story. 
200 watts ERG, steady state, up against an unknown but trusted power meter and the Elite Doretto XR. The Powerbox SC at 200 in ERG, it's quite nice, quite accurate, quite happy with those numbers. Jumping up to 250, it's not quite there. It's reporting a little lower. Jumping up again to 300, and you can see there there's a bit of a separation at the 300 watt zone. The unspoken power meter and the Doretto XR are happy. It's the Powerbox SC that's reading a little under. Into the overs and unders, and you can see there, it's doing exactly the same. Accurate at 150, which is below that 200 threshold. Anything above that, it's reading a bit low. Those are two other power meters, they are happy, happy. A quick sprint, and it's clipping off the sprint too. This is five second average, so it looks a little cleaner on screen, but it's not quite getting the peak power numbers as the other power meter and the Doretto XR are reporting indoors. Again, another slow ramp test, and as soon as we pass that 200 watt threshold, uh, the Powerbox SC is reporting a little lower up against those two other meters that I was checking against. Hmm. So here we are at my favorite website to compare two Llama lab tests performed in the Llama lab this morning after a complete drivetrain stripped down rebuild, which included a reinstallation of this power meter. First up, I used the Kicker 5 up against the Asio Majuro Sheaths and the Powerbox SC. So after the setup and zero offset, we did the steady state. Things changed today. The Asio Majuro Shi and the Kicker 5, they were happy. 223, 223 within those two steady state efforts there. The Powerbox SC was reading a little high in the 200 watt zone and higher but less higher at the 250 watt steady state, indicating that sweet spot may have changed. Now, if you're asking yourself, how can I compare a dual sided power meter? total power meter and a single sided meter. Well, the DCR analyzer tool splits out left, right, and I can tell you that I was 48.52 on the power meter for this, indicating the Powerbox SC should have been reading lower, not higher than what you're seeing here. Into the sprint. Uh, this is five seconds smoothed, and it's again clipping off the top. Uh, the Asioma Duo Shi and the Kicker 5, they were happy within a few watts. FSA Powerbox is just struggling to get over a thousand watts there for that average. After those sprints, a bit of separation took place. Um, epic dropouts from the Asioma Duo Shees there. I'll put that as environmental. But the trend we see after those sprints is that the 150 watt zone, the, the Powerbox SC is reading high until the 450 watt zones. And then it sort of comes, ignoring the dropouts there, let's assume it's tracking like it does prior to the dropouts. Um, it appears the sweet spot has shifted from that 200 watt zone up to around 450. Hmm. So I split the Asioma Duo Shi into the Asioma Uno Shi and performed my final test today, which is on screen here. Things changed again. Now things didn't change in regard to the pedals that I was using and the smart trainer. It was the Powerbox FC that had shifted the goalposts. In a I was going to say in a good way, it's close. Let me show you the details. Okay, jumping in here, that's looking really good. Look at that steady state. Um, this is single sided, up against a single sided, and total power at the back, and me being very balanced and disciplined. That's all looking pretty good, as we'd expect, other than those dropouts. Into the sprint where the kicker went MIA. It was an interesting day wirelessly in the Llama Lab, but that's okay because we have the Asioma Uno up against the single sided meter here. Again, consistency in that it's clipping out those power numbers from the power box. So left leg not quite capturing what I'd expect from the crank arm. Um, once everything came back into line and everything started recording again, I did another angry sprint with the three power meters. Again, power box clipping the sprints. See the trend that I'm doing now? I'll do multiple tests. This is only a subset of the 20 hours of comparative data that I have. So if you think this is boring, I've done a lot more analysis than this. Uh, from there, the power meter seemed to have shifted its offset. So at the 150 watt zone, it was reading high. Uh, 300 wasn't too bad. Uh, 400 a little closer and almost reading the same as the Asioma Uno Shi. So it had a, it, so the goal posts had shifted from that 200 watt sweet spot now up to the 450 watt sweet spot. But it also shifted during this single ride session that I did these two lab tests in. Two other slow ramp tests and reading high for this meter through here. And the higher I go, the closer it came to the Uno Shi on the left. Uh, and here there's a little bit right there at the end where it drops off. So it's sort of, it's inaccurate 
accurate and then inaccurate again. Was this simply a zero offset issue? Was it a temperature thing? Could a zero offset on the head unit or the app change this? Uh, the few little tests you see right there at the end was me trying to do zero offsets with multiple units such as the head unit and the app, same deal. So something had changed, couldn't quite put my finger on what it was. The good news though is those power meter pedals and the two trainers that I used were working very, very well as a baseline to compare this unit to. So conclusions on the power, Oof, where do I start? Uh, look, a simple scaling of this power meter will not resolve the issues that we're seeing. Scaling this up or down will shift that sweet spot, but then make things accurate either at the lower end or the higher end. Um, I just simply can't trust this per install or per ride as it stands. So my conclusion on this one, it really does feel like a pre-release product. There's a lack of information on the Powerbox management app. I had to find that myself. The virtual left-right balance setting isn't documented anywhere. And the website lacks detail on the 30 mil spindle and the 24 mil spindle options. Also, no mention of the single crank arm availability. Now, this is a budget level unit, so I'll cut it a little bit of slack for that. But the numbers I was seeing out of this unit weren't within the specifications as sold on the spec sheet. As it stands, the unit that I tested wasn't something that I could just put on the bike, pair to my head unit and just go out and ride. I could not trust what I was seeing. And with that shifting sweet spot, I was always questioning, was that right? Was that wrong? Did I have to do a zero offset? Did I have to reinstall it? All things we should not be asking of any power meter unit. So from here, FSA have my feedback and data already, and they do confirm the way in which they're measuring data with the Powerbox SC could be contributing to the differences that I'm seeing. They've also hinted at a possible alternate firmware that could address these issues, but at the cost of battery life. Given this unit has an estimated battery life of between 400 and 450 hours, I'd be super happy with say 200 hours and more accurate numbers. I think if you're really serious about racing and training and having good quality numbers, then the FSA units based on the power to max Spider would be a much better option, obviously at a higher price. So there we are, proof once again that power meters are very, very difficult to get right. Look, let's see what FSA can do with the firmware, so stay tuned on that, and thanks for watching.